Hello guys, um, just coming back from work, kind of stuck in a bit of traffic here, um, I thought maybe I would just quickly talk about um, this past Saturday, we had King of the Table 11, um, yeah, me and the guys from the Copenhagen Armor Sling Club, we were watching it live making some bets, having fun, um, so uh, let me just remember what happened and I'll talk a bit about the matches. Um, match 1, was it uh, Schoolboy versus uh, Ryan Bowen? I think that was it. Um, I did make a stupid bet. As I normally do. Mm, I think after round one or after round two, when I saw that uh, Ryan Bowen lost 2-0, I think that's when I made the bet that Ryan Bowen wins the match. And uh, three of the guys took the bet, and I lost a lot of money. Not a lot of money, okay, just a little bit of money, it doesn't matter. So, uh, during the rest of the event, I had to recover somehow. So I was, uh, I was attempting to make uh, smarter bets. Uh, so let's see. Nobody actually wanted to bet anything on uh, uh, against Revaz Lutidze, and I was also like Revaz just looked too massive. Yeah, I'm sure that evening nobody really wanted to bet against uh, Revaz. That uh, Georgi Zerano was really amazing. I'm sure it. Will, I'm sure Revaz was a crazy strong that day. That uh, Georgi is just so impressive lately. I hear people saying that uh, yeah, Georgi is just improving every single time. Keeps looking better and better. So that was a beautiful victory. Very very impressive performance by uh, Georgi. Um, but yeah, no money won uh, back during that match because nobody went to bet anything. And the next match, what, what, what was the next match? Now, yeah, I might struggle actually trying to remember all of these matches now. Um, maybe I should open the picture so I can remember better. But okay, let me just exercise my memory a bit. At some point, I know that um, Michael Todd was fighting Lars Lamparelli. No, Lars Robakin, sorry. Um, and I bet some money on uh, on Michael. I thought that um, Lars just had a, a, a few, a couple of these easy opponents, uh, like the Russian guy. And then, um, who else did the, he beat? Ah, the New Zealand guy, Mateur. Yeah, it's a difficult name, but yeah, the New Zealand guy. Uh, and I think Michael is just a level above that. That's why I thought, okay, Michael being confident, feeling strong, I feel like he should be able to do, to win the match. And he did, so I'm glad about that got some money back on that one like what else what next um, yeah let me think schoolboy big boys did we have another okay uh, Oleg Petrenko was also fighting Kizurgali on Garbayo and I was also kind of feeling that Oleg looked way too massive on that day, way too massive, and then Kedrigali is just obviously a natural guy, so at some point it just starts to get difficult, and Oleg looked big enough to a point where I thought, okay, Oleg might take it, so I bet money on Oleg, and I got some more money back, so, uh, and yeah, Oleg is just... I know what, but Oleg is a beast. I know 
his capabilities. Um, I think his weirdest loss to me was his loss against John Bruzank. And of course, we know that John is great, but I, I was a bit surprised by that loss. But otherwise, Ole keeps killing. So I'm glad about that victory. And then, um, what else? I know I made another smart bet. What was it? By the way, just a spoiler alert. I still lost a lot of money if, uh, during the last match. I thought uh, Ivan Matushenko would uh, beat Marozo. And midway through the match, it looked very good. It looked very, very good. So I was happy. I was clapping. But then, um, yeah, Marozo just kept sitting down in that weird position, which is hard to finish. Matushenko kept getting in, but just couldn't really do the last bit, last push. Because Marozo was just sitting in such a nice, smart position, very defensive. So it does make sense how he was able to just outlast it. Uh, so yeah, a lot of money lost on during that uh, uh, fight. Okay, who, who else was on the card? Ah, Lachlan Adair and Paul Lynn. Here we go. This is another match where I've got some money. I somehow thought that stylistically Paul Lynn really has that nice hookish drag. And then Lachlan didn't look that good. Lachlan looked like an amateur. Always opening up without really moving the body at all. Yeah, just stylistically it went so well for Paul Lynn. Uh, yeah, that's it. And I, what else? I, I'm sure I'm missing some crazy matchup. It would be weird if I. How many matches in total did he have? Uh, I might have to pause that video and then quickly look at the picture. Okay, I think the only one which I missed was uh, Kamil Jablonski versus Vitaly Lalietin. Um I did bet money on uh, Kamil. So another small loss on my side. Wait a second, maybe nobody took a bet. Anyways, doesn't matter. But uh, the match was, um, was great. I almost felt like Emil could really get it done, but at the same time, even if Camille does manage to win, um, he's a little bit unstable somehow. It sometimes does work, sometimes it doesn't. Vitaly has so much more control, so Camille is still. But on the other hand, when you think about it. Vitaly being such a beast, almost unbeatable. Even if you do manage to get somewhat close to that level, it's a very good achievement. So I'm thinking that maybe if Camille can improve just a bit more, it's already really, really good. But yeah, that's my quick review of uh, King, the, King of the Table event. Oh shit, looking huge here. So, see you guys in the next video. Ciao.